We are in the 44th chapter of the book of Yirmiyahu. The Jews have made the terrible decision to go down to Egypt, much against the advice of Yirmiyahu, totally against the wishes of God. And God now appears. So we talked about yesterday that they got to Tachpan Pes, and that's where Yirmiyahu had to set up these stones that will be, that in the future Nebuchadnezzar will place his, his palace over, but now they have gone even more. So I don't know if it's more Jews who've come, but they're living in, in four different locations. You've seen the destruction, the disaster that I brought to you, Shalim, to all of Yehuda. No one lives there. Why? Why this happened? Because of your idolatry, because you worshipped other gods and you ignored me. And I said, so many prophets to tell you, don't do this abomination, this abominable thing that I had. But you didn't listen. You didn't even, you didn't even want to listen. You continued. My anger was fierce and it poured out and the towns of, of Yehuda all over the streets of Jerusalem, they became desolate. They are empty to this day. So why, God wants to know, why are you doing such great harms to yourself that every man, every woman, every child, every infant of yours will be cut off from Yehuda, from the little bit of remnant that you had? You continue to vex me and anger me by offering sacrifices to the gods of Egypt where you are living. and But as a result, what's going to happen is it's just going to be more disaster for you. You're going to become a mockery once again. Have you forgotten the wicked acts of your ancestors, the kings of Yehuda, and their wives, and your own wicked acts, and the wicked acts of your wives that were committed when you were back in Israel, in Yerushalayim? You you never apologized. No contrition. You haven't followed my teachings. You haven't followed my laws that I placed to you that I gave to your ancestors. And thus, verse 11, Therefore, I'm going to set my face against you and cut off all of Yehuda. Now, I don't think this means the people of Yehuda who went earlier to Babel, that's a different. Uh, that's a different piece of. Uh, that's part of the people of Yehuda, right? With Yehonia in the year five ninety seven, this is the people who've come down to Egypt. God is speaking to. From young to old, you will be consumed. You will be destroyed. Famine, sword. You're going to become a mockery. The same thing over and over again, just as happened through plague, through famine, through violence with the sword, happened to, to the people in uh, in Yerushalayim. That's what's going to happen to the Jews here. There'll be nobody left. None of you who came to Egypt will be left. There's not going to be anybody left. Maybe there'll be, you know, five people out of 50,000 or whatever the numbers might be. It's going to be a complete wipeout. And so Yermio has told them over and over again not to do it. And now he's telling them, you're in Egypt and you're still not listening to God. And you're still worshiping idols and your destruction is going to come. And what we've seen many times till the very end, and this seemingly is the last prophecy given by Yermio, it's certainly the last prophecy that he gives to the Jewish people. After this, we're going to have prophecies to the different nations, is when we opened up the book, where God said, Navi la goyim I've made you a prophet to the nations. And here, not surprisingly, 
verse 15. So the people answered Yermio. All the men that knew that their wives were making offerings to other gods, right? And all the women, there was then large gatherings, and all the people who lived there in Patros. Hadavar, what do they say? Hadavar Shirdibart Ta Elenu Bishem Adunai Enenu Shomim Elecha. What you said to us in the name of God. We're not listening to it. Ki aso naaseh kol adavar shatsa mipinu lekater lo malachat hashamayim baseich la nisachim kasher asinu anachnu avotenu malchin v'sarin barayu dav chutzot yerushalayim v'nishpalech v'nispalech v'niyat tovim v'raa lo ra'inu. Just the opposite. We'll do everything that we vow to make offerings to the Queen of Heaven, to all different forms of idolatry, to pour libations to her as we used to do. We did it. Our ancestors did it. Our kings did it. All the officials did in the towns of Jerusalem. For when we had much to eat, we were well off. We suffered no misfortune. When we did that, things were fine. What did the Jews see? Umin, verse 18. But when we stopped, you and your prophets telling us to stop worshiping and stop offering libations and stop bowing down to the queen of the heavens and other such, such idols, when we stopped, when we stopped pouring like basis to her, then we were consumed by the sword and by the famine. And so we're going to bring offerings. We're going to pour libations to her. Is it without our husband's approval that we've made cakes that are like this and poured libations? Sure, no, we have. Everybody knows. And here the Jews say just the opposite of what God says and what Yermio says, those who went down to Egypt. God says to them through Yermiahu, you didn't listen to me. You worshiped idols. You broke my covenant. So I broke my part. And the Jews think, no, just the opposite. Whenever we were worshiping idols, whenever we were bowing down to them, whenever we were pouring libations to the queen, the Malekha Tashamayan, then our lives were good. It was only when we stopped that destruction happened. So Yermio responds to all the people who argued him. Hello, et haki. Yes, you brought all of these sacrifices. Do you think those were remembered by God and those were sort of brought up to his heart? And when God can no longer bear your evil, your sacrifice, which you think are the things that protected you, that's when your land became desolate. That's when it became cursed, a ruin. That's why it is empty. You're saying, no, 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 you're wrong. You got it all backwards. Your worshiping of idols is not what protected you. It is what destroyed you. It is what caused God's fury and anger. And it's a, sad. It's a game of ping pong. Here's your meow over and over again, trying to get the Jews to, 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 to listen to him. But they don't listen. And they say just the opposite. Oh, feel badly for him all his years and never listen to Listen to me, all of you, Yehudim, from the land of Judah who are in Egypt. This is what God said. You and your wives. You know, all of you, you've confirmed your deeds. You said, we're going to fulfill the vows. We're going to bring the incense and we're going to pour our libations to the queen of the heavens. Do it. Go fulfill your vows. Therefore, listen. So listen to me, all you people of Yehuda. I swear by my great name that none of you people 
none of this contingent who's in Egypt will ever invoke my name again. They will never say as the Lord lives, right? Our, se- our connection is severed. I will be detailed, watchful, every little thing, but not to look for good, but rather to look for bad. And all of you will be consumed by the sword and the famine. And who's going to return? Only a few who survive the sword. This is not going to be the many, the pruer vu, the, the 600,000 men, according to the literal words of the Torah that returned from Egypt with Moshe on his way to Israel, this is going to be 12 people, 17 people, 38 people. And everybody, all the remnant will know whose word was fulfilled. Yours, who claimed that it was the Melechet Shamayim, that it was the queen of the heaven, the Malka, who was protecting you and all your other idols who you bowed down to and who you worshipped, or it was me. And this will be the sign, says God, that I'm going to deal with you in this place so that you will know my threats and punishment will be fulfilled. And when I see that, those words, I think of all the times that were told in the Torah, speak to your children. God says, right, remember how I placed you in Sukkot and the times that it says the same things about parents talking to their children, which we, of course, see as the idea of the Pesach Seder. Here, God reverses it. All these terrible things are going to happen and you'll know that my word is what comes. I'm going to deliver Pharaoh Hofra to his enemies, the ones who want to kill him. Just as I delivered Sidkyo to the king, to his enemy, the king of Babel, the ones who you, uh, the ones who, who um, hit his enemy. And here God says, this is the severing of our relationship. I gave you so many warnings and told you what to do and what to do and what to do, and you didn't listen. In the past, the last major episode we had with Egypt, you left the Egyptians behind. You won't see them anymore. Now I'm telling you, says God, in a sense, now you won't see me anymore. Our time together is done. The six or 11 or 14 or maybe 29 people will return from this large number of people who were left here who could have remained in Yehuda and didn't they will certainly know that it's not the queens of the heaven who protects B'nai Yisrael, but the one who protects, and sadly, conversely, the one who punishes, is the God of Israel.